another nine minutes. It's still morning. I know you're really interested in the person that's next to you, but I need your attention for a little bit because I want to make sure that you get to hear the mayor, and I don't want to delay that. So my name is Lynn Snodgrass. I'm the CEO of the Best Darn Chamber in the Pacific Northwest. Some of my members think it's a bigger area than that, but I'll settle for the Pacific Northwest right now. The world is uh, coming up. I want to thank our presenting sponsors. I want to welcome back Portland General Electric and a new member, Columbia Bank. Robin Dodge Little, where are you? There you go. Robin at the dessert table. She thinks she owns the dessert table now that she's a sponsor of the dessert table. So we appreciate that. And also our stakeholder uh, sponsor, Gresham Barlow School District. Dr. Pereira, I know she's here. There you are. Hi. Usually I catch you with a mouthful of food. So thank you. I did again. <laughs> So we appreciate the partnership and the sponsorship. Metro East Community Media is our media sponsor. Keith, thank you very much. And we have Marty Jones with us today. Marty's right here with a table of women. No? Yeah, there we go. All right, we thank you. And the replay schedules, um, you're going to listen to some amazing stuff. But if you want to hear it again, the replay schedules are on the registration desk. So you can grab one on your way out. So you can hear it again or pass it on to somebody that didn't have the opportunity to come to this sold out event. I wanted to um, introduce you to our elected officials that are in the audience. Mayor Bemis is, is here. He's going to be up here in just a minute, but I want to acknowledge in, a, in an order that you're here. Thank you very much. And the chair, the city council chair, Jerry Hinton. Jerry is right there. Jerry, thank you for coming. Councilor Carolyn Eccles, Councilor David Widmark, um, and I don't think that Eddie is here. So Carolyn and David, nice to have you here. Thank you so much. Diane McKeel, the former Multnomah County Commissioner, and she's the current Mounted Community College Board Chair. Diane, hi. And sitting next to her is another board member from Mounted Community College, Annette Madsen. And Jeff left the room. Is he standing right outside? Okay, we'll wait till he comes back in. Um, I want to introduce to you our board members, the Gresham Area Chamber of Commerce board members. Warner Allen of Warren Allen LLC, the chair of the Government Affairs Council, but I'm not letting him talk today. I'm gonna just let him eat. Thank you, Warner. Councilor Carolyn Eccles is also a board member. Steve Brown from the Outlook and Pamplin Media. So Steve, anybody around him, you might talk a little bit more quietly around the press. I'm just teasing. And Corey Price, Gresham Grocery Outlet. Corey is right here. And we have a new board member with us. He's taking uh, the remainder of a term of someone that had to leave. And I want to reintroduce Matt Miller from Gresham Sanitary Service. Gresham, Matt. So could you give all of the people I just introduced a round of applause? Thank you so much. There he is. Jeff, I just wanted to acknowledge you. Jeff has done an amazing job with what you see in front of you and what you're digesting today. So Jeff, I want to thank you very much. He's in charge of the persimmon. <laughs> so thank you so much. All right, so in front of you are Legos. Um, for those of you that are grandparents, you know that you're spending money on Legos instead of the college fund because it's pretty cl darn close to that. But why did I choose Legos today to acknowledge or be the centerpiece for the mayor? Well, quite honestly, when I decided begrudgingly to make it a green and yellow event, so there we go. This is now retired. But I, be, I thought, what goes with green and yellow? Um, you know, so I, I kept thinking, I don't want to be spring flowers and, and elevate the green and gold any more than it already is elevated in the mayor's mind. But truly, Legos are a building block. You can build small things with it, lots of different pieces, or bigger things that don't work. There's only one wheel on the back and the front wheels are pretty small, but you could take it apart and build it again. Or you could make 
crazy things like green frogs out of it. But what you do is you build and you build again and you have that sense of accomplishment and you put pieces together that you didn't think would work together in a room, in on the table, whatever. And you sit back and go, oh, that's great, but I still have some pieces left, so let's build some more. And that's what Mayor Bemis has done for the past almost decades just one decade plus, of him being mayor with his city council, with those that he works with in, in city government. That's why there's Legos. I'm so glad that we have the opportunity to have the mayor with us today. And um, I'm hoping that he answers every single one of my questions. <laughs> What are the chances of that, Mayor? So with that being said, I would like to introduce a friend of mine personally and a friend to all of you, our newly, semi-newly re-elected Mayor Shane Bemis. So this is how it's going to work. I ask, you answer. Um, in all fairness, I asked the mayor to take a look at some of the questions because I wanted to make sure that I included everything that he thought was important because I didn't want him to outstage me by talking about things that I had no clue about. So the first thing I wanted to talk about today was the work plan. The work plan is something unique to Gresham. Um, it's not unique to business. We all, most of us in our business, we have a work plan and we have a schedule of what we're going to accomplish for the year. We increase profit or we're going to bring on a new line or whatever. But it's rare for the city government to have a work plan and to stick to it. So, Mayor, if you don't mind, could you explain what a work plan is for those of us that don't know? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I, I love coming to the Chamber of Commerce. It reminds me of exactly where I got my start in community service happened uh, mostly because of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, you've all heard me talk about, you know, that I'm a uh, small business owner myself. Um, you know, when I opened my business, I did everything the wrong way, uh, spent all my money before I ever got opened, and uh, had to make a profit the very first day I pulled my open sign. I had no money for advertising. Somebody said, you need to go to the Chamber of Commerce, so I did. Showed up on Friday morning, gave away a free, couple free pizzas every Friday morning uh, as long as, as, for like two solid years. Um, and y'all came through in a big way, and I would have never made it in business or been sitting here in public service had it not been for the foundation of the Chamber of Commerce and my friends and, and fellow business owners that support each other in the Chamber. And you all do that to new businesses and uh, venerable businesses alike. And I just thank you all for that. And thank you for your leadership again with the governmental affairs. I'm going to get to your question, so don't, I promise no, you no, I No, 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 I, um, I know you are, but, but I'm wondering where the free pizzas stopped. <laughs> I mean, I'm... Well, yes. Um, I sold those pizza places in 2008, but we can talk about they some noodles. They had free clam chowder on Fridays <laughs> and Saturdays, so free clam chowder would be okay, too. There you go. Um, so the, the council work plan really came out of, um, I had served uh, four years on the city council um, prior to becoming mayor. And when I became mayor, it was, it was clear to me that there, was, there needed to be a focusing of the elected body. There needed to be a focusing of the elected officials, which in turn would then focus the city manager in the functions of the organization. So for us, it was pretty simple. It was um, unlike my first year in business, I had no business plan. I wanted to make sure that we had a business plan uh, for for uh, the city that would focus all of um, our work. Um, it made it really easy then for the council to get together and we've had some, um, I've been very fortunate to have some exceptional um, elected leaders working alongside me, many of which are in this room today. Um, but. But one thing that Gresham has consistently had is strong leadership that is completely focused on the betterment of this community. It has not had, um, uh, it has not been a place where politics has been bred. It has been a place where community service is had. And um, I feel very thankful and fortunate to be able to serve um, with, with uh, the fellow counselors. But again, we wanted to just make sure that we had a way to focus our work and then to keep, to hold the city manager accountable to that work. And it's worked very well. We've done it every year um, that I've been mayor. It keeps, it doesn't mean that um, there's, there's kind of four ways that the council work plan is developed. Um, one of them is, uh, from uh, city council uh, elected leaders, the others from the citizen advisory committees, the others from city staff, and the other is just ongoing operations that the city has to do, as you 
no, we don't close. We're 365 days a year, 24 hours a day in, in uh, uh, public uh, uh, police services and fire services. Your water has to go 24 hours a day every day, that sort of thing. So there's stuff that's just ongoing, and then there's stuff uh, that uh, that focuses that, that we will highlight and then and focus in on our work. So how do you prioritize? I mean, I understand the input, and that's wonderful. Right. My compliments to you because input sometimes is hard. It's right. hard to hear what you're doing wrong or right. what needs to be improved. But how do you prioritize? With that. Well, it's pretty simple. Gresham has one of the lowest property tax rates of any city in the state of Oregon, yet we're the fourth largest city. So we've had to really figure out ways to be creative, uh, to be nimble, uh, to use partnerships, to seek federal priorities, federal money. So when it gets down to, you know, what are the things we would like to do, that's about like this much of the council work plan. It's mostly driven by what are the things that are mandated us to us to do, mm -hmm. um, uh, and then uh, what, what are the things, many Many of the things will carry over year to year. Some of them are multi-year projects, but others have been um, things like that have ended up on on the work plan before, like um, uh, the children's fountain uh, in the in the mm -hmm. plaza. You know, and that was something that we decided that we wanted to do. We weren't quite sure how we were going to get there, but we got really creative and found some federal money through community development block grants. We lobbied in Washington D.C. and and got the federal money in order to build that amenity. But those are the kind of things that will end up <clears throat> going on. The work plan, but really, there's not a whole bunch of fungible stuff on there. It's 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 really pragmatic, uh, 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 you know, to to get the work done of operating the city. So, if uh, the things that are mandated or that you have to do is on the work plan, is there ever any efficiencies within that that you strive for, as opposed to bigger vision items or the want the wish list, if you will? There's always efficiencies. That's part of of every process. I think um, we are uh, an incredibly efficient city not because you have this these great minds that are you know sharpening every pencil although we do but really again as by by virtue of having one of the lowest property tax uh, rates in the in, in the entire state there's just not a lot of extra money to, to to be able to you know most all of the general fund is going to police and fire services mm -hmm. so and then the rest is again uh, uh, fee driven or development driven or that sort of thing so we've um, had to find ways to to, to get efficient and get better. The good news is, is that uh, there's so much data available right now in, in all of our businesses and all of our organizations, so figuring out how to use that data to maximize uh, the highest return of your property tax dollars is where, where, where we land. And, and a lot of this stuff on the council work plan is interwoven through that on how to find uh, uh, efficiencies. So I um, downloaded this yesterday, and Holly, I'm sorry it's printed in ink, because now our price went up, um, that copier ink thing. But it's fascinating. I'm going to set this down. It's really well done. It gives you what the strategies are all the way through, and it gives you a little bit of information about each item. So I would encourage you, it's, it's well written, and it's easy to read. So I would encourage you to go and take a look at what your city government, um, either your business city government or your home city government, is going to be up to and strive for. And, um, and you could help them be held accountable for what this is. That's right. So you could go, or maybe be a part of the vision for next year, whatever. So, um, so you've come up with a plan. Do you have top goals, or, or what are the three top goals? I, I know they're all top goals, but if you could pick three, what do you think that they might be? Well, this year we did something um, different with the work plan, and where we put it into three categories, and they're, it's gonna hold them up here, but um, a safe community, opportunity and livability and sustainable services and that really are the three the three buckets that uh, drive uh, the council and they drive uh, the work plan mm -hmm. um, safe community we can all agree that um, that's something that uh, we all want and value opportunity and livability we all want better livability in our neighborhoods uh, in our parks and our, our recreations sustainable services again gets to the point where I've talked about the, the low property tax rate and I don't mean to belabor that but it's something that we don't 
talk about a lot. We have in the past. We don't talk about it a lot because we just we just figure out how to get it done. We do the Gresham way, and we we use as um, as much partnerships as we can, as much federal money as that we can find. We've advocated very very leverage. strongly, yeah, uh, at the federal level for um, uh, cops funding from the federal government. Uh, the city has had the three highest uh, awards from the federal cops money in the state of Oregon. Hmm. The last three rounds they have done it. We also have been very um, uh, very direct and uh, safer, what's called safer grants, which is funding for fire department, federal federal money for the fire department, uh, as well as leveraging our CDBG to you know to with our partners uh, uh, in the region to get better outcomes there as well. <clears throat> So the question was the top three. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, okay go ahead. Ta so I'm holding again. Yes, all so all all three of these. Every, what you said was very interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, the, the, these top three again are are the whole work plan. Okay. So everything goes everything goes into them. So if we don't if we miss one of these, I think it doesn't it does a disservice to the other two and makes the other two not really. Uh, 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 able to execute on, but a safe community. We talk about, um, you know, I know you've got some questions about 2018, and we can talk about that mm -hmm. in terms of some of the progress that we've been able to make uh, there. I think we're making great progress on uh, uh, livability. Mm -hmm. um, we have gotten very creative in how we've approached mental health services. Um, we've talked um, um, before about the struggle with mental health, the struggle with homelessness, um, and what we've been able to do there. I've got a report. Uh, just last week that there are no campers anywhere on the Springwater Trail in the city limits of Gresham and just to the outside. So that's good. Wait, wait, wait. Let's repeat that. No campers anywhere. Thank you. Wow. The, f the flip side to that is while we have taken a strong uh, approach on that to protect livability, we've also been very compassionate about it. Mm -hmm. The other flip side of that is is that we found housing for 40 individuals since November. Now that's something new too and that's worth applauding. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go off script a little bit because we were going to talk about homeless a little, a little bit. No, so you, the city has hired somebody specifically for that task. Yes. Can you describe what that person does? Um, so we ha we started with we started with one uh, homeless outreach specialist. Um, that person has connected, um, goes in and and uh, connects with homeless individuals, and then face to face, face to face, okay. and then figures out what is the what is the service triage that this individual needs, and how do we get them the most help that we can. So we have a lot of um, uh, partners again that we um, uh, use for services, but we also he will also take them uh, to get driver's license or to fill out applications or to get them to providers that um, uh, have uh, other sets of services that can get them up and, and out of their situation. So are all the services you're referring to, are they within Gresham or there's no. some services that have to be outside this? Right, outside. Mm -hmm. uh, some are within, uh, mostly outside. Uh, there's county uh, resources. Of course, we have uh, partnerships with Human Solutions. We have partnerships with uh, Snowcap, et cetera, uh, mm -hmm. to try and kind of bridge together um, uh, the 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 services and the disinvestment that's happened in mental health, and as you know, and you've all seen that that's been a that's been a big disinvestment uh, for a long time. And um, uh, you know, it seems like it's America's cities that are dealing with the issue more than they have ever dealt with it before. Yeah. And particularly for us, it's suburban first tier cities. You know, first tier suburb cities. Um, when I talk to my peers across the country, it's all they're all dealing with very similar uh, mm -hmm. situations. Yeah. And so it's. Um, but I do know that we're we're making progress. We we also had, um, we hired another homeless uh, service specialist um, who's done this work for a long time um, and, and is dogged in his approach and is out um, connecting people all the time and has been the primary reason we've been able to ha find housing for these 40 individuals since November. So we're making, we're making great uh, strides in it, but again, it's been one of those things that I've said from the very beginning. Um, we're, we're, um, we're going to be compassionate about how we handle it, but we're also not going to let our livability in our neighborhoods slip away. So the the specialists that you have, they are busy um, accomplishing the goals of finding services for them. If if they run across somebody that really doesn't want to do the services, is there a way to um, handle that kind of a situation? Do they have the tools to do that as well? They're a little bit like you. They don't take no for an answer. <laughs> so they, <laughs> just saying. 
No, they just, um, again, it's a, it's a repetition thing. Like uh, uh, both Kevin and Aaron uh, 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 continue. There, there are folks that do not want any help. They don't want any services. They want to continue to live the way that they are. And some of that um, could be mental health. Some of it could be, um, uh, you know, addiction issues. Or some of it could be just anti-society, you know. And, and so it is, you know, this group of individuals then will kind of triage and assess. But they, will, they won't take no. They just keep going back and back and back. So we've had some of our most troubled and prolific um, individuals that have been causing, you know, some issues in certain areas of the city that we thought that the police were just exasperated with. We've been able to get uh, some headway with and, and get them up and, and, and out of their current situation and hopefully on the right track to recovery and, and a better life for themselves. Mayor, that's a success story. Yeah. I mean, that in and of itself, that's so good. A safe community opportunity and livability, and then sustainable services. Yeah. Well, what? sustainable services is, again, um, we have, um, say it one more time, one of the lowest property tax rates of any city <laughs> in the state. Now, we There's can, pads and pencils so, on the table to repeat. So we can, we can, we've been fairly effective at finding uh, partnerships and federal resources and that sort of thing, but at some point, um, that will you know, that will run out. And it'll be a question left of um, what are the things that we value in this community mm -hmm. and how do we fund those things and how do we and how do we and how do we move forward? One of the great things I think that has happened um, uh, in, in this community for a long time is both uh, the Reynolds bond passing and Gresham Barlow uh, mm -hmm. passing. You're starting to see that in 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 uh, this, the community right now. And it has an unbelievable effect on people and their perception and people that are moving to Gresham, we know that we're getting younger and younger. Young families are moving here like crazy, which I think is just a fabulous opportunity Doesn't for us. Doesn't it make you feel yeah. old? It makes me feel, yes, it does make me feel old. <laughs> it, it does make me feel old. But, um, <laughs> But uh, it's, it's, it's good stuff. The schools are, I am so impressed with uh, both, uh, all, all three of the schools, Centennial, Gresham Barlow, Reynolds, they are all, uh, graduation rates are coming up. The amount of dedication that I see by uh, Dr. Pereira and her team um, uh, for Gresham Barlow and what they're doing in the schools and having kids in the system um, is phenomenal. These kids are learning things in second grade about coding and all this other stuff that like, I have no idea what they're doing, but they're, but they're <laughs> but they're doing great things, and I'm sure it'll help them at some point. It's just great stuff. But I'm, I'm very excited about the schools, and, and the parents are excited about them. The parents are excited about the leadership they're seeing. They're excited about the investment. And I think, again, that is just a great place for us to be, and, and uh, us as a community, capital U. I think it's for the first time you're seeing, at least that I can remember, you're seeing a strong educational community, a strong business community, and a strong city government. And all three, as you've said before, all three are working together in a way um, that is moving and will continue to move the community forward in just, just phenomenal ways. I'm very excited It's so it. strong, you almost feel guilty to not work together. And that's how good the bond is right now, the bond between the three. Um, and you're right to shout, give a shout out to Centennial and Reynolds as well. They're, they're working their tails off to make sure that it's a strong connection to the business community and to the city as well. So we saw the work plan. You explained to us how it works. So do you have a personal plan? Does the mayor have the opportunity to have his own vision? Or have you worked it through? Or there's something on here that you want, oh, that's my thing. That's what I want. That's a burning desire. Well, as the defender of the process, I have to say no, okay. right? Because it's all in here. But um, I'll tell you what motivates me is the same thing that's always motiva motivated me in public service, and that's my kids, right? I mean, they are. Um, I, every day I'm amazed by what they do, what they absorb in this society that they're growing up in, um, how they're forming their opinions, how they're learning. Um, and so that is what continually motivates me. And when we're getting younger and, and um, uh, every day in this community, it's how are we providing the opportunities for our kids? Like, you know, I started talking about education. Everybody said, Mayor, don't talk about education. You can't talk about education. You have no control over education. You don't know anything about it. And you no. It's 
so don't talk about it. And I said, well, I don't know. It seems like um, parents talk to me about stuff, and it seems like there's some things that we ought to be talking about in terms of education. So we started talking about it, and, and, and one, of the, one of the great things um, that I've had the opportunity to do is with, the, with um, my role in the United States Conference of Mayors, I was appointed uh, the chair of the Youth Involvement Task Force for the entire country. So we get to work with uh, youth from all over the United States and mayors from all over the United States to talk about how they're working with kids and how they're um, implementing um, uh, visions that kids have and policy suggestions that kids have, which is intuitively not uh, where most mayors would go. But when we talk about when we talk about kids, right, and we talk about their time, 20% of their time is spent in the school. So the other 80% of the time, where are they? They're in our communities, they're in our parks, they're in our streets. And so getting mayors to think in terms of, listen, it's not just education, you know, it's not just school boards, it's not just superintendents that are responsible for these little uh, human beings. Mm -hmm. We're all responsible and what are the processes that you can put in place as a community to help support those kids. And so we started some things like Gresham Reads, which is kind of a silly thing, but it's just a way to get free books to kids that normally wouldn't have them. Um, so they get, the, the, you know, they get the opportunity to, to, to read, but it also says loudly that this community values education. And so the, the more that we can loudly say that, um, the better I think that we're going to be as a community, the more supported we're going the more support we're going to have uh, for our youth. Um, and I think that's only going to make us better. We had a, um, we had a survey in the state of Oregon. Uh, they surveyed 2,000 high school kids. They asked them, what's the number one thing you need in your high school? Now, I think if they'd asked me that when I was there, I would have said more electives, more parking spaces, more time off. I don't know. Who knows what it would be. But the number one thing that the kids in the state of Oregon said, number one thing, more mental health services. Yeah. Think about that. I mean, they're self-identifying that they need mental health services, okay? So that, that tells you something. My children would have said that their mother needed the <laughs> mental health service. So we're not, we needed to ask that second yeah, question, right. perhaps. Right. But when you think about when you think about the world that these kids are growing up in yeah. and some of the pressures that they have, and I don't for us when we sat in high school, I don't think we ever thought about anything bad happening to us other than maybe a bad grade in our classroom. Mm -hmm. For these kids, it's a lot different, okay? So <clears throat> how do you bring those kids to the table and have meaningful conversations with them as and, 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 and mayors are figuring out we've got to do that and we've got to get better at it. And I think we'll only be better as a community once once all the voices are heard and not in a pejorative manner, not in a pat on the head and get sent away, but in a real meaningful manner. Tomorrow, uh, there's nine high schools that are having a youth summit at the city of Gresham. We're looking forward to that. They have Our youth task force has self-identified um, the issues that they want to talk about. They want to talk about uh, mental health and sexual harassment in the school. Um, and and Who organized this? The Did Youth this? Advisory Council. Our Youth, youth Advisory okay, Council. Okay, so Gresham Youth Advisory. Yeah which is made up of, they're appointed by the city council. Okay. They're made up of individuals from, students from each individual high school. They meet um, once a month. Um, they, um, they take issues head on. Um, some of the most sensitive stuff that uh, the adults don't even want to get near they take on. For instance, you just saw, uh, I think just today, there was a, a conviction uh, in the hate crime that happened in Rockwood, um, which was a terrible thing. Uh, the Youth Advisory Council went in to that neighborhood where that happened. They painted a beautiful mural. They disarmed um, uh, a bunch of the conversation that was happening. And it was a beautiful thing. And I don't think, you know, that the adults would have been down there doing that, but the kids were. And so they're having real hard conversations that are happening in society that they're taking head on and they're dealing with them and it's it's really fun to watch and they're not they're not they're not they're not going to sit by this generation isn't going to sit by they're they're coming forward and and uh, buckle up so the yeah. yeah so the youth advisory council they brought they're bringing those folks together tomorrow how many did you say were going to be there do you think I think we have I'm not sure what the last number was 60 70 something like that, Is that so right? we have okay. nine schools so, so long oh yeah. okay yeah, yeah, wow yeah. so wow so will we get a report on that or how how will we find yes, out yes ma'am oh I know I'm not asking I just want to know sometimes sometimes really good things happen yeah. that are so good, but you forget to tell yeah. everybody else that they're good. So I think, I think uh, Metro East will be there tomorrow too, I believe. 
Okay, yeah. so yeah. maybe a replay schedule. Yeah. We're, we're, there right. we go. Right. Okay, so um, you didn't talk about your personal plan, in, but your your personal passion has well, always me, been the, children and families. Yeah, let it's me do, always yeah. been. Yeah. So so here's the thing: as I as I look across this room, um, I see somebody that gave me my first job. I see somebody that sold me my first house. I see somebody that gave me my first bank account. Um, I see somebody that I used to wait on as a kid at Chum's Restaurant. So it's my community, right? I want that same community for my kids. And that is what has always driven me. So when we talk about how do we, you know, it, when, when, when we built the sports park, it had kind of, if you remember, it had kind of, we tried to do it with private donations and mm -hmm. it just kind of died. Yeah. And we kept saying, well, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. And then I looked at my oldest son, and he was like nine years old. And I'm like, holy cow, I've been saying this his entire life, so we better figure this out, right? So that perspective, I think, is helpful um, in this in this community. Uh, Gresham has given me everything, um, literally, and, and I want that same for my kids and your kids and everybody else that wants to be here. It's a great, it's a great, great community. We are on the upswing. Uh, we've been through some stuff, uh, as, as you know, every community has through this, through the Great Recession. But what motivates me again is, is just making sure that we have everything that can support kids and families, a workforce, uh, a place that you can get uh, education from pre-K to higher ed, um, a place that you can stay and work with uh, the right uh, you know, available jobs to you, and a place where you can put down roots and feel good about those roots and, and raise your family. And it's just, uh, I think we have a great community. I think oftentimes we sell ourselves short and we don't toot our own horn as much as we could. And I think, um, you know, if you look at some of the events that we've had in this community that, you know, we've been able to carry on with Judy Hahn's vision for the Art Walk and what that means to bring in 20,000 people yeah. into downtown, a community that will um, take a special needs person like Todd Kernan and rally around him and build a $54,000 statue for him in their downtown and then have a parade and have it be like the best thing that they've ever done in their life. I mean, that's the community that I'm proud to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And it's the one um, that we got to keep together. And sometimes through sometimes through these challenging issues that we have and these major societal forces keeping the community together, um, sometimes I feel a lot more like a, a mental health counselor than I do a mayor. Um, but uh, we, we we can do it. We're doing it, and we will continue to do it. So I don't want to accuse you of anything, but now that your oldest is driving a car, is that why transportation's way up there on the list? Have those potholes done? I'm I'm just kidding. Um, it's a scary thing when our children start to drive. Yeah. It's actually when they're alone in the car that we are scared. Okay, so I want to move on. There are, um, thank you for all those answers. It, it's so genuine, transparent. So in 2018, De Beers, the diamond um, manufacturer, Element 6, came to town. How did you, how do you keep such exciting economic news a secret? I mean, that, that was like, oh my gosh, that's the coolest thing ever. I mean, it truly is a game changer. That particular business and manufacturing is a game changer. How, how do you and your economic development team go out and seek and, and you know, advice and be able to keep it a secret? I mean... Well, I think the secret is getting out as Gresham Vista starts to get um, more populated with more businesses. Um, uh, it, you know, we have a great economic development team at the city. Um, part of the she's here, she by is. the way, Shannon Stady. Yep. Hi, Shannon, yep. she's um, economic development director, queen, whatever, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, she is. She does a great job, and her team does uh, well, um, a, g a great job with her as well. Um, but. But part of the thing about the council work plan is that there's stability in the organization, okay? When you have stability in the organization, mm -hmm. then you can start to build some pieces with some professional people where you're not just a stop. People aren't just stopping in Gresham to get a better job or just stopping in Gresham for, you know, in between jobs. They're, the, the, when the professionals are coming in, they're staying with us, they're understanding the philosophy that we really do care about business and that, we, and that we're going to um, put 
in the right when, when you when you free people up to think um, out you know outside of the box to think creatively. We started looking at Gresham Vista, for instance, right, and that was uh, owned by LSI. There's like 300 acres. Um, we would market that site all over the world, especially in clean tech manufacturing when that was you know a really big thing a decade ago. Um, but we could never really get LSI to 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 divide it up or to move on it or that sort of thing. And you all know the story. We we you know the our staff came to us and said, Mayor, we think we should buy it. And I said, Well, I don't think that we can get away with that, but let's talk to somebody that could. So we talked to the Port of Portland, who was fantastic. Within a year of us taking that idea to them, they owned it because they do economic development. Well, we've been able to land Subaru yeah. there, Medline, uh, De Beers, hundred million. De Beers is almost a hundred million worth of investment. There's expansions that are already going on. Again, which gets to that point where it not only adds the high um, tax value of what's there, but it's also providing jobs and ancillary services all along the value chain uh, in in business. But what we did with that site is when there was opportunities, we seized on them. So when there was ARA money that was coming out under the prior administration, we made sure that we used that for all of the transportation uh, upgrades we could all the way around that to make sure that we were ready uh, when the tables yeah. turned and, the, mm -hmm. and, and that we were ready from a transportation standpoint uh, for, for new development. We've also wrote some of the um, legislation in the state that talks about uh, like strategic investment zones and trying to get those right so that we make sure that we wanted to take again politics out of the decision we said if you if you have um, if you're in this sort of a business and you meet these benchmarks and this amount you qualify for this incentive to come uh, uh, to to Gresham Vista or, or where, wherever the zone may be so again it's putting together those processes we also said when again to the part of, of having a great team and having st some stability in the team they said why don't we codify um, how fast we're moving through these? Because often, when, every time I meet with a, protect, uh, uh, a potential business owner or, or somebody that's trying to looking to come to Gresham, I always give them my cell number. And I say, listen, you call me for any reason whatsoever. I mean it. And I tell them all the same thing. I said, you will not outpace us. We, you will not outpace us. And the first couple of times I said that, the staff went. They were a little bit crazy about that. <laughs> But we, but you know what, we did it. And, did you and, give them your cell phone number too? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but so, so again, then we got creative. Said, so let's let's codify. You know, the state says you have 120 days to make decisions mm -hmm. from a land use standpoint on some of this stuff. Well, we were doing them, um, you know, much quicker than that. So I said, well, then if we're going to do that, then let's just codify that. So we actually the first in the state to codify codify a 66 day review, which means within 66 days you're in and out uh, and off and running. And no other no other city has done that. We've been successful in it, and so. As you start to provide some stability and as you start to put the right incentives in and you have people with relationships that understand business, then the secret is kind of out, right? The migration Brewery is doing a great job getting the secret out about yeah, how I've, easy Gresham right. was to work with compared to where they came from, Portland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. But my hat's off to uh, our entire economic development yeah. team, Shannon, the work that she mm -hmm. does, uh, the work we do with uh, Greater Portland Inc., and the opportunities we have there has been has been really good, really good for Gresham. This is a good segue. Um, that was the beers happened in 2018. Can you give me some highlights about 2018? And you went, yeah, yeah, rah. Let's, you know, this was wonderful, and I'm proud of it. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I think um, you know, as having done this for a while and having gone through some. Again, some major societal shifts, some uh, uh, increases in poverty, the Great Recession, um, uh, you know, some some not so fun times. Um, one of the things, again, with children and families that we've been focused on is building out that social infrastructure. What are we doing with these kids when they're not in school? And so we were able to uh, partner with Friends of the Children, with Boys and Girls Club, with Open School, with Rosemary Anderson School, with Salvation Army, with Human Solutions, with Snowcap, with all of these providers to try and put in this big wide net to catch our kids earlier than we, than what we were catching them. Um, we wrote grants all over uh, to put midnight basketball in, um, recreation programs. We've With our partners, we've been putting in uh, recreation programs in the summer. I'm getting to your answer. All of that stuff, right, takes some time because you start with kids at a little age. All of that stuff takes time. 2018, we had zero homicides. Not one homicide in 2018. And yeah, and that's, 
the part the part the part one crimes are down from a five year low in 17 and they were down again in 18. Now wow. that isn't because there's less crime. You know, I mean that, that we're just doing that much better of a job. We're catching kids earlier. We're giving kids opportunities at an earlier age where there was no opportunities before. We used to say in Gresham, I mean, you, you know, years ago when we cut, when recreation was cut, it was it was a different time. Uh, there was different. Um, there weren't as many kids that weren't at potential yet, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 that changed. And and we were a little slow in catching up with those programs uh, to, to get to our kids, but we did. And I believe that it has a direct effect on what we saw happen with, with homicides and with crime last year. And I'm hoping that we'll continue that trend. Um, I feel, you know, um, the Rockwood neighborhood is changing. Um, their property values are coming up. There was like the fifth hottest market uh, in the Portland metro region not that long ago. Rockwood Rising as well on its way that the Urban Renewal Commission they're going to break ground uh, here in the uh, in uh, May. In fact, it's coming before uh, the agreement's coming before the Redevelopment Commission today. Um, wow. So all of those things are starting to come into place, and we're starting to change the the trajectory of some of our youngest individuals. And and uh, I just think that's a great thing. Well, you, you're doing a fabulous job. You're not doing as good of enough job telling us about it, however. But you tell me, well, listen, and I'll I, get the point out. One year, a long time ago, we had a very low homicide number, and I mentioned it. And the newspaper, not one that's that's here, not the newspaper that's here, a different newspaper said that I bragged that we didn't have uh, just one homicide or something like that. So I'm always very careful about oh, okay. bragging about homicides. But I, but again, I think it's, uh, I think that a zero number, a zero number for us is 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 a huge huge thing. Well, especially when you look at all the hard work on all of the services to get to that point and to recognize it. That's wonderful. So um, any other highlights that you want to bring out? Because if not, then I want to go to the Metro Mayor's Consortium. The who? Metro Mayors. You want to go on to Metro Mayors. Okay, so Metro Mayors, this uh, you already going to use the word brag, but that's not true. You talked about your role in the U.S. Mayors Conference and in that role, and I am so proud that you. This is the second time you've chaired something very important with that national organization, but locally you have um, represented us really well, and we're the first. Is it president or chair? chair. First chair of the Metro Mayors Consortium, yeah. correct? So, what is it? What is it? You and and, and twenty-five other mayors. Oh, so okay, it's made twenty-five. Up, yeah, it's made up of uh, the Portland Metro uh, region mayors. And does it include the Portland mayor, or it is does. it outside? No, it does. Just the Por okay. yeah. So, um, Portland, Hillsboro, Tiger, Beaverton, King City, yeah, Oregon City, Troutdale. Okay, that's Beaver enough. Hill. I okay, got twenty-six. Gotcha. Right. Okay, we'll get it. Yeah. Um, it was formed um, basically out of frustration, I think, with um, some of the politics that were happening at the state level, um, some of the politics that happened at metro level, uh, and it was really um, um, a place where mayors could just get together, and it kind of started as a casual thing where we could just get together and, and, and whine about our jobs and, and everything else and, and then feel better about ourselves, I guess. But, um, but then we started, we started putting some formal structure around it. We started... Here. We started putting some formal structure <clears throat> around the organization because we felt if we needed, if we were going to get anywhere, um, both uh, at the at the state capitol and then at metro that we could speak better uh, and more effectively as a group. Um, we lead by. Um, uh, consensus. So if we don't have two-thirds consensus, then we will not take up an issue. That happens a lot. Um, and then there are uh, issues like, for instance, uh, we have a, um, a uh, uh, lobby document that we use for uh, both Metro and, this, and the state of Oregon. Most of it focuses, as you can imagine, around local control. It's, it's uh, cities saying, just stay out of our way. We can let our people guide our process and, and uh, our plans, and we'll be just fine instead of a top-down. Uh, thank you. Instead of a top-down uh, approach, uh, it's a good group. It's it's really good for um, it's really good for mayors to get together and find out what others are doing or what other communities are doing. And how it, often do you meet? We meet once a month. Once a month. Yeah. 
month. Yeah, okay. we meet once a month. So uh, our biggest uh, legislative issue right now is the stolen car loophole, which oh. I, I think some of you have probably yeah. heard about. No, it, nobody has heard about it because none of you know best wills. <laughs> Okay, so let's describe that stolen car issue. If a car is stolen off of your lot or from your house. If a car is stolen anywhere um, and you're caught, uh, you can say, I borrowed it from Bob, and that's enough. Uh, that's the loophole. That's the loophole. You could so drive a it, Mack truck through that loophole, let takes, alone a car. It takes the mental culpability piece of it, and it basically you can basically give any excuse you want. You can have, we've, we have, um, pulled people over with the toolkit right in their front seat, the car is stolen, but they borrowed it from Bob. And so then the DA doesn't prosecute, there's basically a citation, a slap on the wrist, and they're gone. Um, so what has happened is, is that Portland has gone uh, to the number five stolen car um, city in the nation, and your little old Gresham has gone to number eight in the nation. Our, our, our car thefts have doubled uh, since, the, since this court ruling came out, two court rulings, one in 14, one in 15, uh, it's been a huge problem. Um, so that's one of that's our one of our top priorities for the Metropolitan Mayor's Consortium. We've been down in Salem advocating for that because the reality is, it's the people that can least afford it. It's not it's not anybody in this neighborhood getting their car you know stolen. It's people that have about a seven thousand dollar car. They could probably least afford it to be stolen. There's a huge tow bill once it's recovered. The damage is done to it. We've had situations where you know it kills me to even say it, but we've had um, you know a new family leaving Mount Hood Medical Center goes out with their very first baby to get in their car, and, and I, you all know how hard it is to get the car seat in your first time. It's terrible, right? So I mean, you finally get the car seat in, you're ready to go, you got this new baby, and your car's gone, right? So this is terrible. It's just terrible stuff. So we're hoping that um, that they'll close the loophole. It passed out a committee, the amendment passed, or excuse me, it passed out a committee, uh, the House committee, uh, uh, Representative Peluso is sponsoring it. Um, my understanding is that there's um, some thought to try and put some amendments into it. The amendments I've heard um, would basically be the same as what it is. You could steal it five times until you actually did jail time. So I think we're gonna push hard on that to say no, that's the that's what got us in to the spot that we're in. Um, but that you know, that has real that has real consequences in our community. Not only does it for the you know the citizen that's going through that and the total disruption and violation of it, but it also is a huge resource for 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 our police department. I mean, when you're when you're going on 1,200, 1,300 uh, stolen cars when you were going on five before, that's that's a pretty big increase. It went from can't remember really low percentage of total call volume up to 10% of call volume in the city of Gresham. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, and it, again, that's happening in every community. What we're finding is um, that criminals are using stolen cars like Uber. So they're just picking them up in Tigard and bringing them to Gresham or picking them up in Gresham and driving to Beaverton or wherever, wherever it is, because there's just no consequence to it. So you just get in it, drive it. It's probably quicker than Uber. The the Metro's Mayor Consortium, can you can you give us an example of an issue you didn't agree on that was too contentious to move forward or so so, so sure. as far as it been kumbaya? Um, well, I don't know that it's all kumbaya. I mean, there's some, but it's but it's respectful. I mean, I think everybody understands um, that each mayor is the mayor of their community and, and that they have their own realities and what that means mm -hmm. uh, and what that doesn't mean. We did not take up the Metro housing bond as uh, the mayors. Uh, there was uh, 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 passion on all sides of it. Um, and we just decided that we, you know, uh, we were not going to get to two thirds on either one. So we, we, we listened to all of the conversation. Now we had some, some huge advocates for it. Um, mm -hmm. that didn't do it through the Metropolitan Mayor's Consortium and some probably some antis that, you know, didn't do it through the Metropolitan mm -hmm. Mayor's Consortium. But um, uh, it's, it, again, it's just a, it's a good place uh, for us to talk about the issues that are affecting the, the entire region because we know, you know, now more than ever with people commuting via uh, electronically, et cetera, that the, the boundaries of the cities are probably more and more uh, blurred than they have ever been. Um, and particularly in, in regards, we, you know, we saw that with uh, homelessness and some some other issues the boundaries of a city just don't matter and so uh, being able to work together uh, to, to solve them I think is is going to 
to do the region and and ostensibly Gresham a lot better. So at this consortium, do you have a time to brag about some of the things that you're doing? I mean, the records that you shared with us earlier about the homeless and how you've hired a person, is, is your committee set up so that you could say, this is something that we've done, you might want to try it? Mayors don't brag because once you start, then it needed 25 of them just line up for the next 10 minutes bragging. That's about the everything. politic part. Yeah. That's not so, the mayor. Part. But no, we do try and we do try and highlight again. Um, Portland's small enough. You know, Portland region is small enough that I think everybody's paying close attention mm -hmm. to what different communities are doing with uh, different issues. So we try and keep up on on each other. And some of the members um, from the larger cities are members of uh, the United States Conference of Mayors as well. And I think that's another great place to get some uh, ideas and best practices for mm -hmm. to bring back to your local community. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. So um, in. With re-elections, do you find did you find that there were new members that you had to then get to know and you know build them into that relationship building or or not? In terms of mayors or mayors, yeah, there was an election last November. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, but boy. <laughs> yeah, there was. So did did any of the mayors change, or was it pretty much the same body of individuals that you dealt with prior to that you had relationships prior to? Well, I started out this job as the youngest mayor, and now I'm You're the longest the serving youngest. mayor in the Portland region, <laughs> right? So Lou Ogden, really? Lou Ogden had 20 some years of Tualatin, but he just retired, so now um, it's left to me. So it seems like they all have changed at one point or another, but it's interesting that um, the communities um, change a little bit, but generally the the politics it seems like have stayed pretty close to the same, and I think part of that too is by virtue of the mayor's position. Mm -hmm. um, it's often been said that it, there's political parties, there's Republicans, Democrats, and then there's mayors, and mayors are very, <laughs> mayors are very practical, on the ground people, and that's and I think that's the point of my job that I love the best is mm -hmm. is. Um, when I go to Fred Meyer, y'all ain't afraid to yell at me, and you do, which is great um, most of the time. <laughs> but you're you're with the people that you're serving, and I think that's the that's the best part of this job. And I have um, most all of the mayors I have met uh, view that similarly. They love what they do. They love people. They love their communities. And I haven't met too many that that are, you know are, are are not that way. What are you doing at Fred Meyer's to have people yell at you? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so give us a road repair update. Okay. Okay, you're, you've promised that you're gonna repave every single piece yes. of concrete, asphalt. I did not say that, you said Oh, that. okay, well, yeah. that's what I heard. So if you go to the plan here, this will show you. Page, uh, do you want me to hold it up? I got it. Okay. Page 14, 2019 Significant Capital Improvement Projects Map. So you can see here, all areas of the city are have a major capital put into them in terms of transportation. Uh, what Lynn is referring to is uh, the street maintenance project. So we're into, this is a uh, second year. So yes. 2018 was the first year, mm -hmm. five year, $32 million plan. This tells you all about it in here too. But uh, basically for, um, if you have a bad street, you're getting a new one, basically, is how that works. So uh, it's a very you, aggressive, mm -hmm. it's been very aggressive. It's a good news, bad news, because when they're paving, it blocks traffic. I mean, it backs it up, and you can't get to where you're going, but you go raw. Some when you of the same people that send emails about the bad road send emails about waiting in traffic to fix the bad road, <laughs> <laughs> which is always fun. That would be true. So you, you addressed the partnership about Gresham Barlow School District earlier. Is there anything else you want to talk about to expand? Because if not, I want to go into Hogan Butte. About Gresham Barlow? Yeah. Anything else? Did, did you wrap up your conversation about education earlier? I think so. Okay, good. Yeah. So that would be a microphone. That would be good. I think so. Okay, so, so I noticed that <laughs> Hogan Butte historical home. There are some options. So let's talk about Hogan Butte. Tell everybody about Hogan Butte first, and then we'll talk about the house. Yeah. Well, Hogan Butte has. Who's all been up to Hogan Butte? Oh yeah, so a lot. Okay, excellent. So um, I think it's one of the most probably stunning places you can find uh, in Oregon. I'm absolutely thrilled that it is in Gresham. I'm thrilled that we uh, were able to execute on the longstanding vision that is up there. One of the one of the benefits of that park has been the little house that's down at the entrance to the park, which is what you referenced. Which, how many people know what that used to be? Okay, everybody's been here a while. All right, so it had a, it was a speakeasy, 
And, uh, okay, speakeasy doesn't mean anything to some people in here. So keep, keep describing what it was. You're terrible. Well, I don't want you to be misunderstood. It was a house of ill repute many That's years right. ago. That's right. Okay. It so. wasn't the house that was, it was the people in it. <laughs> so it has a long, long history. Right. Um, so that... Uh, colorful. Colorful, yeah. So that property became available. Um, it made sense for the city to purchase it. So now we have it and we need to figure out what we're going to do with it. But um, you're not going to go back to what it was? Nope. No, okay. ma'am. Um, you were talking about that property. Tax. I'm moving on. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so now we need to figure out, we have to have a community conversation and figure out what we're going to do with it. There's been a, some thoughts to putting a caretaker in it that could kind of, you know, live there, oversee the park, be kind of a field guide. There's a great, um, there's some great opportunities, I think, in terms of education opportunities that uh, we can use. There's also the business person in me sees um, a lot of dollars in um, weddings and events and that sort of thing. So a whole host of things that um, the community will take a look at and try and figure out what meets the, what meets the goals of, of the city, the it's neighborhood. It's truly an amazing historic stunning, house. Stunning. I mean, it really yeah. is. And it does have history to it. But yep. even that, I mean, the, how, the structure of the home is just amazing. And it's right at the base of an absolutely amazing vision of yours with Hogan Butte. So, so where are we in that process? Do I still get a vote on what I want it to be, or where can people get involved in the options, or so is that in, done? So, deal? Yeah, so it's in, it, it is in the work plan, which <laughs> means that it'll be coming through, I believe, historic, I don't know if it's coming through Historic Resources Committee or I'm looking to the council, I'm not sure. One of it'll be coming through one of the citizen committees, okay. um, and then it'll um, then a decision will be made by the council prior to that, or I mean after that. Okay. Yeah. So the park is wonderful. Um, it's beautiful, and on a day like today, it'd be even better. And as the plant material grows and it gets more full, do you need play equipment up there? Or any bike um, racks? Is there is there another phase or another step to make it a complete park? No. The I mean, it's pretty much w what it is mm -hmm. now is what you see. It was built as a nature park, so it wasn't, um, they didn't want playground equipment in right. it and that sort of thing. It's just kind of an open space to go up and see, uh, you know, all of the mountain ranges and the gorge and that sort of thing. Kind of, there's probably more of, if anything, more of an educational component that'll be coming to it in terms of um, educating, you know, about the flora and fauna, the, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, I'm really interested to see what we can do with that house in terms of uh, educational opportunities because I just think there's there's a lot there's a lot there to be able to well the house is one thing but there's a piece of open property you know greenhouse an environmental kind of concept right next to it with mm -hmm. maybe the, the classes inside the house but the practical right. the laboratory outside right. exactly. instead exactly. yeah yep. that's fun okay so we're gonna go from Hogan Butte yep. to a little bit different part and you referred to Rockwood Wising yep. groundbreaking so give us an update on what's happening in Rockwood yeah. so there's a lot that's happening in Rockwood. One of them is is uh, obviously the Rockwood Rising that comes before the Redevelopment Commission today. Um, uh, Roy Kim has been the developer that was uh, had won the award on it. He's been putting together all of the financing that needs to be put together uh, and to do a project uh, like this. It has WorkSource Oregon as one of the main components that will be going into uh, some of the office building. Um, uh, there's housing that uh, is scheduled to go in. Um, um, in the in the second phase, the first phase is going to be the commercial piece of it. Um, but again, another opportunity for new investment in Rockwood, new opportunities in Rockwood. We want to make sure that everybody um, uh, has uh, one of one of the things about Rockwood Rising. I think that has been uh, about the Rockwood uh, uh, Urban Renewal Plan in general has been that it has had a lot of citizen involvement in it. Mm -hmm. Meaning from you know 20 years you know ago ish when we were putting it on the ballot, it had a a lot of uh, the plan was developed by the community, what the community wanted to see. Some of that has changed as time has, has changed. And one of the things, um, you know, right before the Great Recession, I mean, the, that Rockwood property was ready to go by the people that had developed most of the Pearl District, um, Homer Williams and Dyke Dame. And they had, they were ready to develop. And then, boom, the recession came and, you know, the whole world changed. So, 
I'm glad to see that the that that's going to start coming to fruition and that the opportunity uh, is there. You also have um, a lot of folks putting down home ownership in Rockwood, which I think is a, another great thing for the neighborhood um, and just, uh, again, great for the entire community. Mm -hmm. I know that it is encouraging. I get calls or notes every once in a while. We're so sorry that you're not there anymore, but I love yeah. the Boys and Girls Club. So it's it's a it's a good feeling yeah. that this beautiful building and then it yeah. block by block yeah. yeah. will get it. So the the is it a groundbreaking? What what are you having next week? Is it oh that's a, it was a redevelopment. I'm ready to dick the shovel out yeah, and yeah, start yeah. digging. We'll make sure you get one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good. All right. So I want to ask you um a, a question on our behalf. What can we do? I mean, you are doing an amazing job as mayor. We we are doing. We the community. No, it's not a we mayor. No, it's it a is. you mayor. No, it is. It's we the community, and I mean that wholeheartedly. I mean, you. Um, I get to. I get the privilege of representing you at City Hall, but you're easy to represent because you're all um, genuine interested people in this community. You want what is better for this community. Every one of you does. And, I, and I've and i seen that for years and years and years, um, whether it is um, the Elks Lodge, whether it is, you know, the downtown development group, whether it is, um, you know, the, the Center for the Arts, you name it, the Mount Hood Community College. All of you have interest in this community and making it better. And don't lose that. Because when we lose that and we have apathy, um, then it makes it much harder harder to do anything at City Hall, and it makes it much harder to live in a community where you actually feel like you're in a community. And um, I just want to say thank you to each one of you that um, continues that mantle, because uh, it's been, there's some of you have been doing it in a really, really long time, Marty Stone. <laughs> So uh, thank you for that compliment. But but what what can we Stay do? Stay involved. Pay attention. Pay attention to what's. Is there going any on. particular area that you need you know us to focus on? Uh, state legislature, yeah. metro. Um, no, yeah, I no, I mean I mean just I I think. Um, I, th How I, can we help you? Stay involved. So, so pay attention to, um, you know, I think that there's a great relationship, again, with uh, education, business, uh, and the city, but we can't take that for granted. You know, we've got, because we have great relationships, uh, doesn't mean that we can sit and not pay attention to each other and what's going on. If, um, you know, Dr. Prayer needs something through the school district, uh, we talk regularly. If the business community needs something, we talk regularly. So just make sure that you're staying involved and don't, don't don't ever think this is this is the thing that drives me crazy. Somebody, some issue will happen, and a community member will say to me, "Well, this happened." Rah, 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 and I'll say, "Well, why didn't you call me?" Well, because I didn't want to bother you. So, well, that's what I'm there for. I mean, call me. So don't be afraid um, to to reach out to your elected officials. This group of elected officials is incredibly responsive uh, to to citizens, and and they want and need uh, your involvement. And it's not um, we're not one of the places where where we decide everything and then we form committees and then just have you bless everything and then we just ignore you. We're not like that. We want you at the table. For instance, when we talked about um, the uh, the utility fee that we that we placed on for public safety, we started out with one way that I thought was the best way to do it. Well, by the time I was into my third town hall of ten of them, um, I found out that the community had a different idea of how this should go. So the community <laughs> changed it, and we changed it together, and we made a better product because of that and because of the community's involvement. So your government is open, it's uh, flexible, it wants to hear from you. Uh, so continue to to stay involved in that way and I'll do I'll do my part in terms of as stuff comes up uh, that I think you know that the business community uh, has an interest in or whatever to try and flag that uh, for you all but you all generally are paying really close attention and and I think that's a good thing I feel a little selfish that you're the mayor of only Gresham and that you're not have that you don't have a broader platform because you are an amazing individual, and I'm not stroking. I thought I'd stroked enough by having green and gold, but that lasted for about 30 seconds when you first sat down and jabbed at me. But um, we are we are really blessed to have someone with that vision who manages a city council and who can work across the aisle, if there is an aisle. 
on city issues. So I want to thank you. But I want to end with one more question. How is the U of O baseball team doing? <laughs> well, <clears throat> you all know how the U of O baseball team is doing. Um, you do realize that in March, there's this thing called March Madness. No, that's a different game. Yeah, no, no, a no. totally different the only game. Thing the Ducks are do you know on that? Is 1:30 Friday <laughs> against Wisconsin. So go Ducks. <laughs> yes, and the Ducks are gone. So, <laughs> Mayor, on on behalf of everybody, I want to thank you so much for today. You, you appreciate it. I have a few notes. So soon. Okay. Pastor Fuller's giving you a standing ovation. There we go. How about that? There we go. So don't go away. I want to thank our sponsors, and you can help with thanking the sponsors. I want to thank our sponsors again. Portland General Electric. They are wonderful um, and incredible key sponsors, as is Columbia Bank. Gresham Barlow School District, thank you again for your sponsorship and Metro East Community Media. Don't forget the replay schedule. We have been honored to have you here today. Um, I wanted to keep the room intimate and close. We could have filled it. I, I would turn people away. We could have filled it further, but I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Next month, uh, the third Tuesday of the month, we're going to have John Charles from the Cascade Policy Institute here. The Oregon legislature passed a transportation package, if you remember, um, last session, and it's under attack. Now, he wants to talk about roads and bridges, most specifically bridges, but there's a lot of conversation going on now where, where the transportation expansion, if you will, that's the word expansion, it's not my definition of expansion, but to get commerce moving in downtown Portland with the I-5, there was some money in that bill to allow for that to happen. There's a huge movement right now to stop that money from, happen, from being used on that. So I think John is going to talk a little bit about that now, too. Um, on April 16th, it's going to be right here, replay schedules at the registration table. Did you enjoy your dinner? I mean, your lunch? It was enough to have for a dinner. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Do not take the Legos home. My grandchildren be mad. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you. That was fun.